Hey everyone, we're in Edmonds, Washington. Today we're going to be showing you how to do an Aquor V1 Plus hydrant installation. This will be a retrofit install. This house is about five years old. It came new with a brass frost-free silcock. Uh, it was working fine. The homeowner wanted to try Aquor, so she got our faucet quick connect kit. She's been using that for the last year or two. Now that the hose whip is dripping, she wants to upgrade to the full Aquor hydrant. We're going to put in our V1 Plus frost-free hydrant. This house is plumbed with PEX already, so it's the perfect opportunity to try our new PEX expansion inlets. We'll show you how it's done. First things first, we'll want to find the water shut off, shut the water off to the whole house. Uh, in this case, it was in the driveway in this valve box. We undid the screws. Now we're gonna pop it up. Um, so now we're gonna take off the Faucet quick connect kit, and then we're gonna drain the rest of the water that's in here. So, this is just draining all the residual water in the line now. Now that we're shut off and drained, time to go inside, see where the plumbing connection's at. In this case, we're going right into the garage, so it'll be super easy. Next to the process, we'll be cutting the plumbing, taking the silcock out, and preparing for the new one. The existing plumbing is wrapped in some insulation here. Looks like we have some PEX A tubing here. You can tell from the, the rings here that it's expansion PEX with some fittings added. We're going to be cutting this, making a new fitting connection here. So for this project, we're going to be using an 8-inch V1 Plus hydrant. I'll show you how we made that decision uh, before we took anything apart. So that you can go online, order the Aquar hydrant before you even start the project. In most cases, you can guesstimate or you know, do a rough measurement of how long the hydrant needs to be without taking anything apart. So in this case, the exterior wall, it's about 20 inches total. We're gonna go ahead and subtract the distance from here to the inside drywall and find out exactly how long that hydrant needs to be. So let's go inside here. The distance from the inner drywall to this exterior wall, it's about 13 inches. So if we go ahead and subtract 13 inches off of that, that leaves us with about seven or eight inches to the outside of the mounting block where the hydrant's gonna go. So our eight inch hydrant should be perfect. The most accurate way would be to remove the existing fixture and measure that, but this should get us close enough. All right, with the replacement hydrant ready to go, now it's time to cut the plumbing, remove the existing unit. I'm going to have a bucket on hand for any residual water that's left in the All right, time to remove this one. The hose connector, cover, template and instructions. All right, so based off our estimate, looks like we were spot on. This looks like we pulled out an eight inch silcock, and this is our eight inch V1 Plus hydrant. Looks like it's a perfect match. Now that we're ready to put the aqua hydrant in, we're gonna need to enlarge the hole a little bit more. Typically it's an inch and a quarter for a standard frost free, the Aquar takes an inch and a half entry hole. Now you'll want an inch and a half hole saw like this one, but if I try to drill it like this, it's probably gonna jump around since there's nothing for the bit to grab into. There's a few ways of doing this, but a neat trick that we really like is taking a wood dowel, piloting a hole in it, and then just slipping that onto the hole saw. This way it'll act as a guide and let us comfortably expand that hole. With the entry hole drilled, now it's time to pilot the holes for the three mounting screws for the hydrant. To do that, we'll want to take the debris cover and put it behind the hydrant faceplate to make sure it lines up properly because of the wedge. Looks like we'll actually want to clear out a little bit of the drywall on the upper end to account for the five degree 
tilt upwards. Now, the reason we'll want to chip out a little bit of this drywall is because of the five degree wedge here that tilts the hydrant slightly upward. This makes sure that it drains and stays freeze proof. This existing frost free should have been mounted like that. They usually come with a plastic wedge that goes around here and tilts it upward. This one was not installed with downward grade. That means there's a very good chance if the house settled at all, the water wouldn't drain and it could have been prone to freezing and breaking. Now that the pilot holes for the three mounting screws have been drilled, uh, we can secure this to the wall. But before we do that, we're actually going to swap the cover out for our optional brush stainless finish. Here are our four options of finishes. This is the standard polymer slate gray that comes with the hydrant. We've got a brush stainless, a matte black stainless, and then a matte white stainless. The homeowner chose the brushed stainless steel finish for this one. Yeah, that's gonna look really good. Now with the hydrant attached to the wall, it's time to connect it to the plumbing. So another optional accessory that we'll be using is our hex expansion inlet. This will let us skip using a threaded fitting and adapting to the pecs and just go straight to it. Less threaded fittings, less chance of leaks, always a good thing. The standard half inch NPT hydrant inlet from the main hydrant body. This is the internal valve for the hydrant. That's all there is inside. Now we'll attach the pecs on it. I'm using a pipe wrench, but this just needs to be hand tight. All right, with some of the existing pecs cut away, we need to make this connection up to this fitting. So it's going to be an elbow coupling going from a pex line here to a pex line here. So let's cut a piece of pex out, get it lined up. Here's the elbow we made. We're just gonna trim off the excess here, cut it to size, make sure it fits. There we go. Now that we've waited 15 minutes for the fittings to set and shrink down permanently, we'll go turn the water back on, make sure there's no leaks. All right, with the water turned back on, everything hooked up on the backside, we're gonna test this out, check for leaks. Looks great. Let's check for leaks inside. All dry. Now let's put the insulation back on. We'll tape that up and we're all done.
So a few of the tools that we're using for the job here. Of course, we got our Aquar house hydrant, tape measure, some pipe wrenches, drills, hole saw with our MacGyvered guide bit there. Three thirty second drill bit, some PEX A tubing, PEX cutters, PEX expansion rings, couplers, and our PEX expansion tool. All right, that was it. This was a pretty quick install. It took us about 45 minutes, start to finish. Very simple weekend project. Uh, with everything exposed like that in the garage, very simple access. PEX makes it a breeze to connect, to adapt to it. Uh, if you have any questions about the installation process, about how to connect to the plumbing line, finding the shutoff, any of the details, we're always happy to help. Check out our blog online uh, for more tips and tricks, or just give us a call or email. Happy to help. Thanks.